Super 7 releases a Starship Captain, no shirt tug included. Here's a look at the brand new Super 7 Star Trek The Next Generation Ultimates, Captain Jean-Luc Picard. Jean-Luc Picard is captain of the USS Enterprise, NCC-1701D. A thoughtful leader, he is equal parts diplomat, resolute warrior, and intrepid explorer, all the while promoting the ideals of the Federation. His distinguished Starfleet career has earned him acolytes as well as loyalty from his peers. Interests include literature, archaeology, and fencing. Before we go and make it so, the first thing we're going to do is grab the tape measure and see how tall the brand new Star Trek The Next Generation Ultimates Captain Jean-Luc Picard is. Uh, I did also buy this one over at Entertainment Earth, if you guys are interested. Haven't had any luck to find this in the wild or in the 24th century. You can click the link down below in the video description. Picard is actually standing just shy of being 7 inches. He's actually about 6 and 3 quarters, or the figure is about 17 centimeters tall. <laughs> Up to this point, number one has been helming the bridge of the Enterprise, and luckily he hasn't destroyed the ship. Poor Riker just can't seem to catch a break. Like in the series, though, Picard would be a shorter character than Riker, and it translates nicely here as a Super 7 release as well. We did also get another iteration of Picard. Here's what the figure looks like with Locutus of Borg. Funny, though, when you're looking at the two figures, even though they are really the same character, it does seem, though, that Locutus is slightly shorter than Picard. I gotta say, first of all, it's a relief that Picard doesn't come include with anything relating to poker. Why I say that, though, is Commander Riker and Lieutenant Commander Data. Both characters came include with not only poker chips, playing cards, and even they took the time to waste the plastic to give Data an alternate head sculpt that had a visor on top of his head. Picard doesn't come include with anything poker-related, although we are going to be looking at Lieutenant Commander Worf in an upcoming review. I may be speaking too soon. Maybe he's also going to come include with, like, poker chips or playing cards. Funny, though, that things are referencing to Picard that the character doesn't come include with the rest and flutes. Only really referenced in one episode and probably like Easter egged in others. Kind of like Optimus Prime with his energy axe. It's one of those things where the accessory only appears in one episode and yet it travels with the character with every figure release. Yet Picard doesn't come include with the rest and flutes. What he does, though, come included with is his fencing sword. It's fairly soft and plastic that they used here. I don't know whether they've actually painted all of this in silver or if they've molded this. My guess is they probably painted it for how well it looks. The end of the guard, or the hilt, I should say, has been painted more in kind of a gold finish. And he doesn't really have, I feel, a dedicated hand for holding it. You could sort of use the hand that he comes with for displaying, for example, the Type 2 phaser. And it, hard, it really does have a hard time to getting in there just because the guard gets in the way. I suppose you probably could bend the finger down a little bit more, but I'm guessing this is the closest thing to holding the fencing sword. It just isn't the easiest thing for him to do. The figure also comes includes, speaking of which, the Type 2 phaser. The phaser is probably the same one that we got with both Riker and uh, Data. Uh, it has, of course, the, the buttons down below here painted nicely in gold. You've got the silver down below here for the firing button. And, of course, on the top is the setting to tell us whether it's stun or vaporize. One of my favorite and more gruesome episodes of Next Generation was the fact that when Picard finds out that the higher elites, uh, Starfleet officers and admirals, are all kind of being affected by these worms. At the very end, both him and Riker fire their phasers at a guy sitting down in his chair and his head explodes. And then this little thing comes up and goes, Arr! such a one of the only and probably last times he saw something really gruesome like that in a Star Trek series. But he does come, like I said, with a Type 2 phaser. Uh, we can take the hand. Where did I put the hand? Right over here. You can take the same hand that was trying to get the fencing sword in, and it works a much better job of actually holding the Type 2 phaser. The thumb is, uh, in fact, right on the firing button. Perfect for vaporizing those slug things inside the people's heads. Uh, one thing also that comes included with the figure, too, is that he comes with the Globe Illustrated Shakespeare. It's a pretty thick, meaty book. I can't even imagine how much... I mean, I would imagine it would be the complete works of Shakespeare. And before you think to yourself, there's no way that Picard would actually hold that. Don't worry, Super 7 at least includes a hand for doing that. The hand is pretty wide, so it's not going to be good for really anything else. You just take the book of Shakespeare and fit that into his hand, and you can carry it around with him. I mean, obviously, it would do a much better job of carrying it if it was still attached onto the figure. You can just unmilk the hands from the provided forearms and just replace the hands that you want to use. Uh, the figure also comes included with his Earl Grey tea. Uh, and he also comes included with the actual uh, coaster, or saucer, I suppose. A square saucer this time around. And he also comes included with dedicated hands for that. So he has this hand here, which, to look at it, you would just assume it's a relaxed hand. But you can take the saucer, and it just fits underneath the thumb. 
And it does a pretty good job of actually staying there. It's not going to be going anywhere. And then for his other hand, literally on the other hand, he also comes included with this hand here that you can then take the, the end handle here of the Earl Grey tea and just fit it in place like that. So essentially what it is, is you'd have this hand here, this hand here, so you can have him actually holding both the, the, the mug, both the mug and also the saucer. Nice little included accessories. Lastly, the figure comes also included with the make it so hand. That's at least the hand I'm giving this, at least that's what I'm calling it. The pointing hand, he also comes included with a gripping hand. Uh, the gripping hand, I don't really know what this hand would actually be for. Uh, I suppose you probably could use it for the phaser if you want to have it facing up or upward. It certainly doesn't accommodate the sword because there's really no way that you'd be able to, unless you were to be able to pry the fingers away from the thumb, but everything seems pretty close in quarters. I don't think you'd be able to do that. Now here, here's the problem. The last of the figure's accessories is a swappable head sculpt. If you haven't already noticed it, there's one big problem with the card that I have, and I can't even say whether that's the case where it's going to be across the board. Some, if you have picked up this card, you can let me know if you've had similar issues down below. But here's my big problem with what could be a potentially perfect figure is the fact they painted it the way that they did. You see it a lot more with the alternate head sculpt for Picard. While he has maybe questionably dark hair on the back of what's little, little left of his hair anyways, the biggest problem I have really with it is the way they've painted the, the above section of his lip. I don't know why they decided that, hey, let's paint this part in a, in a medium gray. Because if you look at it from a distance, it actually looks like Picard has himself a mustache. Upon closer inspection, it isn't as much a mustache, but it's a really amount of, it's really a dark amount of gray that they've added right here. Why they chose to do that is beyond me. If you actually look at the defaulted figure head sculpt, he has that same problem. Maybe not to the extreme of what the alternate head sculpt would be, but why did they choose to paint the face, the top of the lip, as dark of a gray as they did? It just looks like, like I said, Picard's trying to grow in a mustache. Maybe he thinks that this Riker looks good with a beard, and he figured he wanted to follow suit, but he didn't want to fully commit to the idea of a beard. I don't know, but it does look wrong. The head sculpts on both the cases do look like Picard, but it just ruins it by the fact that they had to add so much gray there. Why was that the case? I'm even so tempted to see if I can take something to kind of remove a little bit of the paint, but I feel like I'm only just going to damage the figure's face in the process. I think I will just stick with this head sculpt. I mean, not that they're really all that different from one another. If you look at them, it just really looks like this Picard has a slight, a little bit more of a smile on his face, whereas this is a little bit more of a neutral expression. Oh, it just, it bothers me so much the way they painted this. I'm even tempted just to try to pick up a second Picard, but I don't know if this is just a problem across the board where every single Picard release is going to have the same paint problems. If you, though, did want to change out the head, it's just a case of popping the head off the ball joint like that. Just replace the head out with this one here. The problem also, too, is not only is just it painted off like this, but it also, like to look at the two, you think that they could have given us another head sculpt that was a little, little bit more of an extreme expression. Because like the face sculpts are so close to one another, it's really hard to kind of see there's much difference other than, oh yeah, this is the one that has the mustache. That's where it goes for the rest of the body. Of course, he does have his Starfleet tunic that he's always tugging down in the series. It's very similar, obviously, to the one that we got with, with uh, Riker. Obviously, the little blips on the top there, he only would have had three. P Picard being, of course, the captain has four. The little insignia communicator is still nicely molded, where it's actually molded above the shirt as opposed to just painting in place. And of course, the lower half of his body is just using black plastic for the majority of his legs, though he's getting a much shinier pair of shoes, similar to what we got with Riker. It's a nice looking figure. I mean, like, my biggest takeaway from this is it, it's just more disappointing that they chose to paint this part of his face. Because if not for that... Even if I want to go back to the defaulted head sculpt, it's going to, for me at least, stand out like a sore thumb or sore mustache. For the figure's articulation, uh, he's going to be basically the same as the Riker we looked at before. So his head's going to be a ball joint, so it rotates all the way around. It looks down, it looks up, and also can move back and forth as well. The uh, top of the body, the top torso for Picard is on a ball joint, so that fully rotates all the way around. You can bring the arms out. Now, I did notice that the arms were a little tighter, and that's not a bad thing at all. I'd rather have tighter joints than looser joints. His arms come out at about 90 degrees, and again, you can rotate them all the way around. Figure does have a swivel in his bicep. The figure only possesses, sadly, a single hinge in his elbow, but that allows at least the form to rotate back and forth. Hands rotate also all the way around. And then when it comes to Picard's legs, they are on ball joints. So you can see there's the ball joint on the inside of the thighs. That's allowing, of course, the legs to move forward, move back. There's a swivel at the top of the thigh, single hinge for the knee, lower leg rotation. And for the ankle, it moves up and down only by just a little bit and a little bit of an ankle rocker as well. Let's get off this terrible head sculpt. Popping this one off, replacing it with not 
that I feel is the better. Well, it is the better one, at least for the way they painted the mustache area. Just pop the head back in place. The other thing I would certainly mention as well is when you're looking at the neck of Picard, clearly there's a, a part where they've painted is the head here. But then you'll see there's a section where it just looks to be like bare plastic for his neck. So there's definitely a divide when it comes to the way that the transitioning of color. They really need to spend as much time to paint the area of his neck as they did for his face. And when it comes to certainly painting his face, they needed to stay completely away from the top section of his lip because it just looks like Picard's now sporting a mustache. If it wasn't for the mustache, Picard looks to be a nice looking figure. Oh, I just really, I, I keep thinking to myself, do I want to go and venture off buying another Picard? Let's get his legs a little bit straighter here too. Do I want to get another Picard? Well, what would happen if I got myself another one and it just happens to be the same problem where he's got paint so dark like that above his lip? If you have picked up this uh, Jean-Luc Picard figure from, of course, the next generation Ultimate Figures from Super 7, let me know if you've had similar paint problems down below. There always seems to be like one thing wrong with these figures, whether it be like overly loose joints whether it be just paint problems, Picard doesn't, sadly, doesn't have, unfortunately, any problems with his uh, with his joints or anything like that. I guess that's a good thing. He doesn't have any problems really with his joints. But where the problem more lies is the paint. Why they chose to paint the way that the figure the way that they did, leaving off, of course, painting off the neck and deciding instead to spend and dedicate the time to paint above his lip is beyond me. As we now wrap up the review for Captain Jean-Luc Picard, I've got the figure displayed with Earl Grey T. Hot in his hands. In one of the episodes, in fact, I actually asked the replicator for Earl Grey T. Hot and and the replicator says he has to specify the temperature. I think he ends up saying he wants it at 83 degrees. So if you want to ever want to replicate Picard's tea and you ever happen to be in front of a futuristic replicator, just make sure though you say 83 degrees. I think that's way too hot. That would burn the inside of my mouth and scold my skin if I ever spilt it on me. Uh, my sweet spot temperature when it comes to either tea or coffee is 60 degrees. Now you know a little bit more about me. Well, one thing that really does bother me about Picard is if not for the way they painted the figure, he would be a pretty good looking Picard. I didn't even mention the fact that on the back of his head, for example, the big bald spot isn't so much the problem, but the fact it's way too pale draws more attention to the fact that it almost, almost even looks like they've only painted the front of his face. The back of his hair, I feel, is, first of all, way too dark of a gray. But then for some reasons unknown, they decided to paint the above section of his lip in a lighter gray. Whose idea was it at Super 7, let's start painting Picard's upper lip? Because it now just looks like he has a mustache. Of the two head sculpts, the one that I started with, with the defaulted head, is the better of the two. The other head sculpt, I feel, is just unusable. It's just going to go back into the plastic tray. It comes with decent accessories. The fencing sword is never something I'm going to be displaying with the figure. It's funny, though, that with these being Star Trek characters and coming clue with weapons, I don't even think up to this point I've even displayed any of my characters on the shelf with actual weapons. I think I've got Data displayed with a tricorder. I've got Riker displayed with the trombone. And when it comes to displaying Picard, I'm just going to display him with his T in his hands. What do you guys think of the figure? Let me know down below in the comments section. I guess also the big important thing to ask you guys, if you have already picked up the Star Trek Next Generation Ultimates Captain Jean-Luc Picard, do you have a similar issue with the paint? If you say no... I might consider maybe trying to pick up another one of these to see, or I might even just see if I can reach out to Super 7 and ask if there's a replacement head that isn't going to have as many of the paint problems. But if you have picked up the figure, let me know down below in the comments section, similar paint, problem paint, or your, your head sculpt's perfectly fine. If you guys, again, are interested to get this one for yourself, I did grab this one. I did grab Lieutenant Commander Worf over on Entertainment Earth. I'll provide the link down below in the video description if you guys are interested and would like to get these for yourself. And you can also as well use that link to save 10% on anything that's over on their site. 10% on anything that's currently in stock, whether that be Super 7 or not. If you guys, in the meantime, did enjoy this video, I want to throw it a like. If you guys are loving the content you guys are seeing and would like to certainly see the review of Lieutenant Commander Worf, it's right, going to be right around the corner. But also as well, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below and you're also turning on the bell notification. Unnecessary things, I'm sure it seems, especially if you're going to be telling that to a communicator, who, a replicator who only just wants to make you tea. But it is also a crucial thing to ensure that you're always going to get those reminders every single time new videos post by the person behind the camera. And of course, there's definitely going to be a lot more videos coming your way. As always, guys, thanks for watching. See you guys next time.